All right, um, to continue on with our Black History Month um, mathematicians, um, I'm actually gonna focus on two women. Um, so the first is Evelyn Granville. Um, Evelyn um, is the second African-American woman to earn a PhD in math. Um, she um, went to Smith College, which um, I believe is an HBCU, uh, majored in math and physics, um, and then went to Yale, um, got her master's degree um, within one year, and then um, eventually got her PhD from Yale. Um, she taught at um, NYU, so New York University, and then also taught at Fisk University, um, which is where I'll talk about Vivian Malone Mays um, next, too. She was an advisor for Vivian Malone Mays um, at Fisk University. Um, Evelyn eventually worked for IBM um, and then uh, worked on multiple space programs um, at NASA for, um, for like those Apollo missions. Um, so there she is. Um, and then Vivian Malone like I said, so she was a, um, Evelyn Granville was an advisor for Vivian um, at Fisk University. Um, Vivian um, actually applied to Baylor um, so I'm kind of skipping our bullet points here, but she applied to Baylor University to um, earn her PhD um, and was rejected because of segregation um, laws, Jim Crow laws. Um, and for some reason, uh, University of Texas at Austin um, accepted her. Um, I don't know the exact reasons why they were um, forced to accept her, but she was actually um, like not allowed to attend um, many of the lectures and not allowed in a lot of the um, establishments where there were like study groups and where the professor would hold office hours. Um, she wasn't allowed to attend any of those because she was a black, because she was black. Um, so um, she eventually did get her PhD from UT Austin. Um, she's the fifth African-American woman to earn a PhD in math. Um, she's the first woman from a Texas university to get a PhD in math, first black woman. Um, and ironically enough, she actually ended up working at um, Baylor University. She ended up going back there. Um, she was the first African-American member of faculty at Baylor University. So there we have it. Um, what we're going to do today in the 3.3 video is um, focus on factoring. So we've done so much factoring um, throughout our math careers. Um, so we're just gonna kind of hit that, hit that pretty hard today too. Um, I'm just gonna focus again on completing the square. Um, we're gonna keep, we're actually, I don't know why, but we focus on completing the square um, in 3.4. So we're just gonna keep fresh with it. Remember our first step is to divide everything by that first term. So I keep it out front. X squared minus six X, leave my little blank, plus 24. I'll get that little blank there too. I'm sorry, got to do plus 12. All right. Um, then the two stays out front. I should do this in blue. X, this would be minus 3 squared. Remember, negative 6 divided by 2 gives me that. And then that negative 3 squared is positive 9. And then we subtract nine over here. Okay. 12 minus nine is three. And then we distribute the two in, in front and into that three. So I have two x minus three squared plus six. So the vertex is at three comma six. Okay. vertex from there. Um, all right, so like I said, we're gonna go into factoring. Um, factoring does help us find some points um, on a graph. They're actually finding the zeros or the x-intercepts, um, but I'm not gonna focus too much on, on the graph. It's just gonna be on factoring. And there's so many different methods to factoring. Um, I'm going to show, um, I suppose multiple, multiple, multiple ways. Um, so as an organizer, um, you may be seeing the big X method. Okay, 
you see in that big x method. What we do is we take the first number times the last number. So a times c, right? One times 15. What multiplies to 15 and adds to eight? Right? Two numbers that multiply to 15 and add oops, to eight would be a plus five and a plus three. So our factored form would be x plus five and x plus three. Okay. This one, um, we can just jump right into our factored form because it's just an x squared. It's not like a 2x squared, which we'll do soon. And you can always double check by doing the four letter f word. Um, x times x, x times three, five times x, and five times three. Just to double check if you ever want. Um, just do it in your head or whatever. Um, there's other, other ways that I like just guess and check. So x and x, what multiplies to 24 and adds to 11? Negative 11, right? Oh, negative 11. Hmm. Six and four. No, that doesn't work, right? That's not negative 11. Um, what about eight and three? But in order to get negative 11, they both need to be negative. And that's okay. The negative 8 times negative 3 gets me a positive 24. That's just guess and check. Um, it's essentially the same as the x method, just not as organized, right? Um, so I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do that from here on out. If you want to do the x method, you can. What multiplies to negative 56 and adds to negative 1? Okay, negative 1, not negative x. Negative 1. This one's kind of nice. It's like, well, the two numbers need to be 1 apart. Right, that's what that adding to negative one means. Um, negative eight and positive seven. So it'd be x minus eight and x plus seven. This is factored form. Okay, notice I say, yeah, when a equals one. So just one's out front. Um, so on this one here, x and x, because that's the only way to get x squared. What well, multiplies to 63? Um, is that nine? and 7. It's going to be a positive 9 and a negative 7. It's a negative 63. So one's positive, one's negative. And the bigger number is going to be positive because of the 2 is positive, right? You can always double check. I had an old colleague of mine who used to do the eyes and the ears, right? That, it looks kind of like a monkey now, right? The 9x minus 7x gives you that 2x in the middle. Just the eyes and ears, just double checking that middle term. Okay. All right. But then there's going to be times where a is not equal to 1, where we have 5x squared or 6x squared. Um, and sometimes with the 5x squared, um, like I know that my only option is 5x and x. That's the only way to get 5x squared. So I still sometimes guess and check with these. Um, especially then again when this is a 2. The only way to get a 2 there is a 2 and a 1. So my options are it's either a 2 here and a 1 here. Or it's a 1 here and a 2 here. Right? Which one of those is going to help you get an 11 in the middle? Well, it's the one there, and it's the kind of how it's at right now, right? Plus and plus, because if I check my eyes, that's a 1x. And my ears, that's a 10x. That's going to give me my 11x. Okay, so yes, I just do guess and check. I'll show um, a different method here on the next one because it doesn't always work. Like 6x squared, um, sometimes it's just 3 and 2. Sometimes it's kind of crazy. Actually, let's take a look at this one. Um, because one thing that I noticed with all three of those numbers is they're all divisible by two. So I can factor out that two, then it'd be three x squared plus five x plus two. Then that makes it actually a little bit easier to factor. Because I know that it has to be a three x and a one x in order to get three x squared. And then again, a 2 and a 1. Um, how do we get a 5 from 2 and a 1? 1 here, 
two here. Right, then that would be two X and three X, which gives me that five X in the middle. That's factored, oops. That's factored form. Just box that one up too. Now I'll show a different method. So I am still gonna start with the X method here. Um, but remember we have to do the first times the last. So six times five is 30. What multiplies to 30 and adds to 13? Well, that's a 10 and three, right? So a lot of us would be like, oh, it's X plus 10, oops. X plus 10, X plus three. This is wrong. That's not right. I mean, how the heck is this 6x squared? That's not 6x squared. That's not 5, 10 times 3. What? Right, that's wrong. So this is where we do a little thing called grouping. Um, hold on. Oh, my goodness. I just grab that eraser, maybe. This is what we could do called grouping. Um, there is, a, like, box method and all that, but I like grouping. Um, we just pretty much copy it down, 6x squared. But instead of that 13x, I'm gonna do plus 10x and plus 3x. And then that five goes down as well, this five. All right, so all I did is I split apart the 13x into 10 and three. And then what we do is we group it. So group these two together and group these two together. Okay, and it's okay if you switch around the 10 and the three. Like it'll still work out. Um, and then we look at well, what does six and 10 both have in common? They both have a two and an x. Three and five, they both can only just be divided by one. So one of my factors is two x plus one. And the other is, well, six divided by two is three x plus five. Right? Um, I kind of skipped some, some steps going on there. Um, so let me do this. This 2x that goes, let's bring that out front. 2x goes out front, 3x plus 5. Right? 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Then um, the plus 1 from that, and then 3x plus 5 because that'll just stay the same when we divide them both by one. These two need to be the same. Yeah, I totally did skip some stuff. Those two need to be the same. Then we get two x plus one and three x plus five. That's our final answer there. Okay, I'll show that again um, with this one. So the, I typically do this method, this x and grouping method, when there's like a six x squared or a 10 x squared. Um, I sometimes will do it even with a 5x squared or a 3x squared, um, just depending on how comfortable I am. Obviously, I've spent many years doing this, um, and so I have that experience um, to do it, you know, quite honestly. Um, so if you need to do the x, it's totally fine. 10 times negative 14 is negative 140. Multiplies to negative 140 adds to 40 or I'm sorry 31 okay and you don't see it's not it's not easy even doing this way and I'm gonna struggle here trying to figure out what it is um, so if you do like 140 divided by 14 that doesn't work right that's 10 and 14 that's not 31 140 um, just keep on like finding multiples 140 divided There we go. Took me a while. See, like I said, I get a positive four. I'm sorry. How about a negative four and a positive 35? Okay. So here we go. Um, 10x squared minus 4x plus 35x minus 14. Okay, then we gotta group it. Group these two, group these two. So 10, can both be divided by 2x. 35 and 14 can both be divided by a seven. Okay, so 
that 2x gets brought out. And then 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we take out that 7. 35 divided by 7 is 5. Negative 14 divided by 7 is negative 2. And again, see how those are both the same in blue. That needs to happen. 2x plus 7. 5x minus 2. It's factor, right? If you have another method, too, that you want to share, by all means, go ahead and share. Let me know. Um, the next thing is just solving by factoring. So it's just more factoring, um, but then solving it um, in the end. So it's just taking a couple more steps. So here, um, I'm just gonna use my guess and check method. Multiplies to negative 24 and adds to two. Uh, 12 and two, six and four, right? Negative six and positive four. Now, when we have it in factored form like this, um, what I do then is I take each factor, x minus 6 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, add 6, get x equals 6, and then subtract 4, get x equals negative 4. Okay, those are actually like the x-intercepts. That's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, it's important that it's always set equal to 0 when you're solving these. Okay. Um, here now, I'll just do 3x and x. So for my 4, it's either like a 2 and a 2 um, or a 4 and a 1. And I think a 2 and a 2 is going to get me closer to that negative 1 in the middle. It's not. No, it's not. How about a 1 and a 4? Like that, because then I'll have 3, 3x and 4x. So I need it to be a negative 4x and a positive 3x. Okay. x plus 1 equals 0. Um, this one here would be x equals negative 1. And then here I'd have 3x equals 4. Add 4 and then divide by 3. So x equals 4 thirds. Okay. So let's just guess and check again, x and x. This would be a negative 3 and a negative 3. They both multiply to positive 9 and add to negative 6. Set them both equal to 0. So here we get x equals 3. And x equals 3 again. You don't need to write it twice, you can just write it once. Okay. Um, on this one here... Um, Notice how they both can be divided, not by a 4x, but by a 2x. And then I have 2x plus 3. Right, we're just it's pretty much factoring out a GCF. So I have 2x equals 0, 2x plus 3 equals 0. So for this one, if you divide by 2, you just get x equals 0. Here you subtract 3. See if we can see, yeah. So we get x equals negative 3 over 2. And x equals 0. Okay. So it's just factoring, kind of taking that extra step. This one here is called like factoring GCF, right? I had to figure out what they have in common first. I do have a few more. Um, on this one, this one's a little different, right? There's no x in the middle. It's like a 0x in the middle. So what multiplies to negative 25 and adds to zero, right? Well, in that case, it's called a difference of squares. One needs to be positive and one needs to be negative. Positive five, negative five will cancel out, make zero x, but they still multiply to get negative 25. So we get x equals negative five and x equals positive five. Um, on this one here, I'm going to do our um, x and grouping method. So negative 24, 
right, 6 times negative 4. What multiplies to negative 24 and adds to negative 23? Should be negative 24 and positive 1. Okay. And this is where we group. So 6x squared minus 24x plus 1x minus 4. I suppose it's still equal to 0 because we'll factor it and solve. Um, the 6x and 24 can both be divided by 6x. And the others is just divided by 1. Okay. 6 divided by 6 is 1x minus 4. And with that 1 coming out, we'll end up still with just a 1x minus 4 there. So 6x plus 1, running out of room here, and x minus 4 equals 0. That's factored. Remember, we have to solve. Um, just to kind of cut things short, x is equal to negative 1 sixth. So minus 1 divided by 6, and then x equals 4. Um, last two here. Um, again, here, this is GCF. I can divide everything by a 2 and an x. See how everything has an x? Okay, so 2x, and then I'd have 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay. 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. I'm going to just factor... I guess and check. Um, actually, no, I'm not because that. I mean, look, the four x. What's what's tough with the four x is it's like is it a two and a two? Is it a four and a one? I don't know, right? So I'm gonna take this little chunk. We'll just have to run out of some room here. What multiplies to negative twelve and adds to four? That would be a positive six and a negative two. Okay. So just for that inside piece, we'd have 4x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 3. All right, they can both be divided by 2x and 2x. And this is just 1 and 1. I should say negative 1, right? They can both be divided by negative 1 because they're both negative. Um, so I would have 2x and then 2x plus 3, and then minus 1, and then 2x plus 3. All right, so now to put it all together, don't forget about this 2x up to the top there. So 2x, parentheses, 2x minus 1, and 2x plus 3, equal to 0. Then to solve it, from this one, we get x equals 0, x equals positive one half and x equals negative three halves okay um and then this last one up top here 4x squared minus 81 again this is one of those with the zero x it's a difference of squares with the difference of squares um it only works if they're both a perfect square so 4 and 81 are so they're going to be a 2x and a 9 and a 2x and a 9 one plus, one minus. That's all it is for difference of squares. Okay, so here we have x equals negative nine halves and x equals positive nine halves. All right, I know I kind of flew, flew through that, but it's a 25 minute video, so I'm sorry. Um, there's plenty of factoring um, to do in the practice. Um, there's plenty more that I can give you to um, just have you just do some repetition practice for it too.